Sometimes you're going to be building an automation using Zapier and Airtable, and you're going to want to trigger that automation over and over again, multiple times, but Zapier only allows you to trigger that record one time from Airtable. There's a nice workaround though, and that's what we're talking about in this video. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you wanna learn more about how we do that, check out our website. I'll include links below. And don't miss our free Airtable crash course if you wanna get up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. But without further ado, let's just jump into the heart of today's video. It is all about re-triggering an automation out of Airtable. So if you know much about Airtable, you know we have our own automations that are available in Airtable, but a lot of times we still need to build an automation in Zapier. But Zapier breaks down because it only allows us to trigger that record one time. And sometimes we need to re-trigger an automation multiple times. Like for example, looking at my screen here, let's say you know for whatever reason, I've got these different names here and maybe I need to send an invoice to QuickBooks or I need to you know, send, send something to Zapier in a way that Airtable can't yet automate internally. I need to leverage Zapier, but I wanna do it by, let's say in this example, clicking this checkbox here. So I've got this automate field type here that is, or this, this automate field that is a checkbox field type. And every time I check that box, I want that to be the trigger that sends this thing into motion. Well, I could build an Airtable automation that says every time that's, that's built, do it. But if I have to connect to some other third party tool that Airtable doesn't connect to, of course, my automation is gonna be a little lackluster. I need to build that automation in Zapier. So then how can I get it so that every time I check that box, this thing triggers over and over again? It's a complicated problem, but one worth solving because you're gonna come up against this a lot in building your own automations in Airtable and Zapier. So let's jump into how we can solve this. So what we're gonna be using here is a tool called Slack. Now, if you haven't already used Slack in your business, it's basically an instant messenger tool. So it's a great way to stay connected across your team and you can open it in a browser or the app inside of your phone, whatever the case may be for you. Even if you don't use this, it's still a tool that you can set up for free and use it in this fancy automation way. So taking a look here, I've created a specific channel. This is very easy to do. It takes all of a few minutes. And in this particular, uh, in the, well, in this particular group organization and then channel inside of here, I'm gonna be sending messages to this channel and you'll see why that's so valuable in a moment. Now, first and foremost, what we wanna do is re-trigger this every time this checked box occurs. So we're gonna use this in tandem with an Airtable automation. I'm gonna open up the automations panel and build an automation that will send information to Slack. Make sure to name your automations, keep them more organized that way. But my trigger here is just gonna be a record matching certain conditions. And in this case, whatever those conditions are for you is what you'll put in here. But for my example, I'm saying anytime that automate box gets checked with a star. So let's run a test. We're gonna pull the sample data into our automation, which we now have here. Now, once we have that, we can go ahead and add an action. And the action that I wanna do here is send a message to Slack. And here's why this is so special. This is an automation that we can build inside of Airtable Every time that box gets checked, we're gonna send information to Slack. And when Slack gets that information, we can then trigger our Zapier automation from watching that channel. So let's go ahead and send this message to Slack. And if you have multiple Slack accounts, you'll have to go ahead and connect the right one. Let me go ahead and connect a Slack account right now. And it's all set up and ready to go. Beautiful. Once that authorization take all of a few seconds, I select the channel if you have multiple channels and if you have multiple automations that you wanna trigger this way, you should create multiple channels and make sure that each one is specific for that particular automation. Now in this case, I'm just building simple automation and all I'm gonna be doing in this is sending the record ID to that channel. So I've brought the record ID from the record and by the way, just quick pause here, this is metadata. So if you don't know this off the top of your head, 
you can always call the record ID using a formula like this. But you'll see that the record ID that we send through Slack is going to actually match the record ID for this particular instance. And so what we can do here is we'll run a test and we're sending that record ID to Slack. Now, if we pop open Slack, we will find that sure enough, we just got a message here that came from Airtable and it ends in lowercase b capital O. Flipping back into Airtable, we see that that is exactly the same record ID right here. So this particular checked box is sending that record ID through an Airtable automation to our Slack channel. Now, we don't have to use this Slack channel at all, but what we do want to do is turn Zapier and focus it on that channel so that when, that when a new message comes in, Zapier knows it's time to do an automation. Now, the last piece of this that we can also do is build some additional steps here. For example, we might want to update this record in Airtable. So once we have grabbed and sent that information to Slack, we can then update this record. Again, update the same record ID that started this whole automation. And we can uncheck the box. And this is a Boolean, so it's either zero or one unchecked or checked. And so we want to uncheck it so we can put a zero in here. And we can also, you know, run a date timestamp and put it into the last automated field. Now, a nice easy way to do this is to actually run a now formula. And we can build this formula off to the side. And this is always going to tell us what the current date and time is. Of course, if you don't want it to represent uh, Greenwich Mean Time, make sure to toggle that off. And now if I go back into my trigger and pull this data in again, I'm going to run the test one more time. Now I'm going to be able to see what now is, what that now timestamp is. And I can use that in my automation here by bringing it into my last automated step. So again, I can grab that now timestamp and plug it in there. And this is a great way to kind of give yourself an audit trail to see when your automation last ran. Go ahead and run a test here. And what this has done is it's unchecked that box and it's told us when the last time it automated this process was. So I can then hide my now formula. I can hide my record ID. I don't need either of those in order for this to run. This is as simple as check the box, send a message to Slack, then uncheck the box through automation and timestamp it with the time that you last automated this. So this is simple enough on its own. And we can go ahead and test this out. Now that I've turned this automation on, we can do it for the Greek goddess Athena, check the box, give Airtable just a moment or two, shouldn't take more than a few seconds. And there enough, or sure enough, we see that it's unchecked the box and timestamped it with when that occurred. Now we can also flip into our Slack here and see that we received that record ID. Now this is a critical part because this is the part that we're going to use to perpetuate automations over and over again. So using Zapier, now we can look to Slack and we can choose an event, a public message posted anywhere or a new message posted to a channel. The second option here is the preferred option for this automation. And let's go ahead and choose our account. If you have multiple Slack accounts, great. In this case, I'm going to need to connect to the automation retrigger account that I just created. And once I've brought that in, now I can go ahead and use that in this automation. Now it's going to ask me what channel I want to look at. And in this case, I want to look at the retrigger channel. Again, if you have multiple channels do, performing multiple automations, you can use them in this way. And then trigger for bot messages. Let's check yes, just to be sure. We want to make sure that this works on an automated basis. And if we save and continue here, now we are going to find the record ID for the most recent automation that we just pushed through. And here it is, the raw text record ID ends in lowercase blk right here. This record ID is what we can now use to perform our automation. Now for our next step, what we want to do is find the record that it was referenced in this Slack message by looking at our Airtable database. So we tell Zapier to look at Airtable 
and we're going to use the find record action event. This will allow us to find all of the related data with that particular record that we're looking at. Now it's important, of course, that you do have the record ID inside of your Airtable database. So the way that we added that in to our field where we called the record ID with a formula is an important step for this. Now I can go ahead and find the retrigger automation database. That's the one we're playing with here. I'm going to pick my table. If you have multiple tables, of course, find the proper one. And here's where we can say that we are going to look for the record ID. Remember rec ID, if I flip back to my air table, rec ID is how I named this field where I'm calling the record ID. This will always be unique for each record. This is metadata created for the record at the time that the record it comes into existence. So I am using Zapier to look at that field and I'm going to compare it to the text that we received in Slack, right? So we got the record ID inside of Slack and we're looking for that matching record in Airtable. And if you want a search formula or to limit to a view, you can do that, but it's unnecessary for this particular uh, step. And we don't need to create this record. There's no way that Slack is ever going to get a record ID in there that doesn't already exist in Airtable. And so we do not want to check this box and we can save and continue. And now what we can do when, if we run a test is we're going to see that this is going out there and finding the data on the record that was just checked. And so we can now do whatever we wanted to do with this automation without needing to worry about it not re-triggering. So for a quick you know, uh, wrap up here, if you wanted to send an email or post something to a Facebook page or you know, send, uh, create a document in Formstack, you know, whatever the case may be, you can then do whatever that thing is. But when you're all set and all done here, go ahead and turn your automation on. And then every time you come back in here and check that box, it's gonna send that record ID to Slack. Zapier will be watching Slack and it will then perform its own automation because you checked that box and your Airtable automation conveniently is going to uncheck the box so that you might check it again in the future and it's going to timestamp your record for the most recent automation that you performed. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly and we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online courses and a group coaching program. And for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.